What's going on, everybody? It's AG here. We got another week in the books. We are one week closer to the college football playoff, to the conference championships. Next week is rivalry week. It's showtime. We're about to get a top three matchup next week. I can't wait. Some things are going to go down next week for sure. Uh, never in college football do the top 10 teams stay the same. You know what I mean? Like never do the top teams stay the same from the beginning of the playoff rankings to the end. So you know some stuff's going to go down next week, no doubt. But we had a lot of movement this week. I had five teams drop out of my top 25. Had five teams obviously move into my top 25. So let's talk about it. Number 25 here, we have SMU. SMU had a big win over Memphis, which I had in my top 25 previously. Solid win. They're looking to be in the AAC American Conference Championship coming up soon. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. SMU, not bad. Kind of having a solid year before they move over to the ACC too. 24, Toledo. How about those Rockets? So they've only got one loss this year. It is to a Power 5 opponent in Illinois. I realize that's to Illinois, but still. To a Power 5 opponent. Other than that, they've kind of wiped the floor with everybody in their conference. They've won every game they need to win. So 24, Toledo. 23, kind of a slept-on Power 5 opponent here, NC State. So looking at NC State's resume, they actually might should be ranked a little higher. Uh, their only losses, Louisville, quality loss. Notre Dame. Quality loss, Duke with Riley Leonard. So with Riley Leonard, Duke, in my opinion, is a top 15 team. Uh, so not a bad loss whatsoever for NC State. Look for them to be in the rankings uh, come uh, tomorrow on Tuesday. 22, coming back in my rankings, Oklahoma State. I had them out uh, after last week. They've got three losses, but kind of, you know, looking at the standings now, kind of everybody's getting a bunch of losses, and it's, it's piling up. Uh, we're looking at the point to where Clemson's about to be in the rankings again. You know, that's kind of what we're getting to here. Uh, James Madison lost this week. We had a couple other teams lose that bounced them out. You know, like Memphis lost. Uh, I had another team that had only lost to James Madison. And so, obviously, James Madison dropped out. I had dropped them out. That was Troy. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of movement this week. 21, Oregon State. They played with Washington. I'll give it to them. They just couldn't quite get the job done. Uh, they dropped quite a bit for me, dropped about 10 spots. Uh, they almost had it, just couldn't pull it out. 20, Arizona, maybe the most impressive one of the week. They beat the crap out of Utah, man. Uh, Arizona, I guess legit. Jeb Fish going to be coach of the year probably. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Arizona fans? Do you think Jeb Fish leaves, leaves after this year? Like, Do you think he gets a better job? Does Michigan State offer him? Does Texas A&M offer him? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a job offer that knocks him out of there. 19, Liberty. How about them finally putting on the gas, putting the spanking on somebody? How about Liberty, man? Coach Chadwell, look for him to probably be the Mississippi State head coach coming up next year. Be on the lookout for that. You heard it here first, insider source. Don't tell anybody, but don't be surprised when that happens. 18, Iowa, a solid Iowa win, 15 points. It was 2-3 to three at the end of the first quarter for this game. How can you not love Iowa football, man? Everybody else is all glamour. All fashion. Everybody wants to run up the scoreboard. Iowa, they want to get nitty gritty. They want to beat you. They even gave the offense coordinator a Gatorade bath after scoring 15 points. Might have been 17, 15, 17, something like that. But they gave him a Gatorade bath in his last game as the Iowa <laughs> offense coordinator in Iowa, at least. Uh, props to him. Hey, maybe Iowa will knock off Michigan or Ohio State. I don't see it happening, but hey, half the battle's getting there, and they're in the Big Ten championship. We'll see what happens. 17 and Tulane. So, again, their only loss this year is to Ole Miss, and that's with their backup quarterback, talking about Tulane. If they have their starting quarterback in the game, they may actually win it. Uh, and if that happened, you'd be looking at them in the top ten right now. 16, Kansas State. Barely knocked off Kansas. Kansas without their quarterback again. So, not the easiest win because it's a rivalry game, but a game they should have won, talking about Kansas State. So, props to them there. 15, Notre Dame. They don't really have any bad losses this year. Uh, they've played one of the toughest schedules really in the nation. Uh, they had, you know, whenever you play that tough of a schedule, you're going to have some losses probably unless you are the top of the top. And Notre Dame, solid team, but not the best team this year, obviously. 14, Oklahoma, slowly climbing back up in the rankings. Uh, all they got to do, maybe, I'm not entirely sure how this Big 12 tiebreaker is going to work, but then again, I'm not sure anybody is sure how this thing's going to freaking work. Because I've seen a minute as we speak uh, on what the tiebreaker is for the second spot. Because as of right now, Texas has one loss. So if they went out there and 
Uh, but as far as below that, there's a log jam of two lost teams. I don't know what the heck's going to happen there. But hopefully Oklahoma can get back in the championship. We can see a Texas-Oklahoma rematch. I think that's what everybody wants to see. 13, Missouri struggled with Florida, but then again, this Florida. But with that being said for Missouri, I'm not going to be surprised if Florida knocks off Florida State next week. Look out for that to happen. Uh, Missouri, hey, surprising year. I had them at number 10 last week. Uh, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year Missouri was going to be my top 10, uh, top 15, I would have called you nuts. But here Missouri is. They've had a solid year in the SEC. Hey, they competed. They have gave Georgia their best game of the year probably so far. Props to Missouri. Number 12, LSU. They have, in my opinion, the Heisman, Jaden Daniels. He's the best player there is uh, in college football right now. Uh, they've beaten Missouri, but they've lost to three top 10 teams. I mean, really, that's not a bad resume. They've lost to Ole Miss, lost to Alabama, lost to Florida State. When those are your three losses. You know, you're doing something right if you're losing to top 10 teams. Number 11, Penn State. Again, their only losses are to Michigan and Ohio State. Kind of looked a little spotty today. Uh, the quarterback did go down, Drew Aller. So we'll see if he bounces back and comes back next week. I don't know. We'll see. But Penn State, again, when your only two losses are top five teams, how can I knock you too far? 10, Ole Miss, same thing. They've only lost to Alabama and Georgia. You know, what are you supposed to do? They beat an LSU. Did what they need to do there, you know? I mean, so Ole Miss, kind of surprising. Uh, this is kind of what they usually are. You know, they beat who they're supposed to beat, lose to who they're supposed to lose to. My, I'm surprised they beat LSU, I guess, is where I'm saying I'm surprised. Nine, Louisville. They live to fight another day. I'm not sure they control their own destiny. They're going to need a little help, but they do have that slimmer of hope to get into the college football playoff if – all chaos breaks loose above them. It is a possibility. Number eight, Oregon. Oregon looked dominant today, but again, didn't really play anybody, so hard to give them too many props, but they did what they're supposed to do. They won. Kind of control their own destiny. If they went out, they probably should be in. It's probably how it's going to happen. Seven, Alabama. In my opinion right now, probably playing the best football besides maybe Georgia. Uh, Alabama, Georgia is going to be a bloodbath. I can't wait to see that game. Uh, that's probably the best two teams in the nation right now, in my opinion. Uh, you know, will Alabama Alabama beat them? I'm not sure. I think they do have the opportunity to, though. And if you ask me, Alabama's playing better than Texas right now. I just can't put them above them because Texas holds that tiebreaker. Uh, and if Texas didn't have that Alabama win, I'd really question just how good Texas is because they're barely winning these games, but they do win them. So let's talk about number six, Texas. Texas squeaked one out against Iowa State. Uh, first game without their starting running back, Jonathan Brooks. Uh, Quinn Ewers still looks a little injured. Uh, he can't quite throw as far, you know, as he was at the beginning of the year. That shoulder injury looks to be nagging him a little bit. But they got the win here nonetheless. Five, I really considered moving Washington up to number four this week, but I didn't. Number five, Washington. Uh, looked good against Oregon State. I'm not sure how good Oregon State is, but Washington's going to get to play Oregon again. If Washington wins out, they're in the playoff, no doubt. Number four, Florida State. So here's the big deal for Florida State here. They lost their quarterback, Jordan Travis. Uh, he's out for the year with probably a broken leg is what it looked like. Uh, they're going to get to play Florida next week. Then they've got Louisville. If they can win out, they're in. Uh, now, the committee might try to find a way to knock them out with the back of the quarterback. I don't know. But if they can win out, they're in. My only problem is my fear is for them that I think they're going to lose one of these games over the next weeks. Uh, they might lose to Florida. I'm not 100% sure there. If not, they might lose to Louisville. I hope they can win. They've got that win over LSU, uh, really a spanking over LSU at the beginning of the year, kind of kind of keeping them above Washington for me right now. Otherwise, Washington would be number four. Three, Michigan, they struggled today, man. Maryland almost snuck up on them. I had Maryland in my preseason top 25, but they kind of haven't lived up to the hype I thought they would this year. But they almost snuck it out against Michigan, but Michigan lives to fight another day. But next week is the week. They're playing number two, Ohio State. And winner of that is in the playoff, most likely, unless they lose to Iowa. If that happens, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens then. Number two, Ohio State, like I said, they play Michigan next week. This is the game we've been waiting on. This is the game. Can't wait. Number one, Georgia looked dominant again today. They look like the best team in college football right now. Uh, that Missouri win still a little too close for comfort for me, but that was the game. Everybody, everybody gets one game. You know, you're going to play bad one game a year. And the question is, do you win it? They did win that game. So, number one, Georgia. But that is my top 25 for the week. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Who would you put in? Who would you move up? Who would you move down? Let me know down in the comments section. We'll have a friendly conversation. If you are new here, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me and hit that subscribe button down below. 
So until next time, AG out.